Uh, thank you to all of you who are here today who continue to engage in conversations not only about how we want to get our elections right, but how we must get our elections right. Um, I continue to have questions from constituents with regard to mail-in ballots. And um, it has been floated that um, we potentially could be mailing ballots to all registered voters. And I have constituents who regularly contact my legislative office. I hear from other colleagues that they are convinced that dead people are voting, non-citizens are voting, people from out of state are registered to vote in Pennsylvania. And you combine these fears with the Auditor General's December 2019 SURE report, which said that there are thousands of potential duplicate and inaccurate voter records and perhaps many potentially deceased voters. So how can we talk about mailing anything to anyone until we know for certain that our voter rolls are secure, accurate, and up to date? And Madam Secretary, I would hope that you could share that with us. I'm happy to. And thank you, Senator. Um, I, so I want to start out by clarifying. Nobody's talking about mailing ballots to all voters. So what we're talking about is mailing ballot applications. So, and that's a really important distinction because in Pennsylvania, voters have to apply. When they apply, they have to provide either PennDOT, you know, driver's license ID, or the last four of their social security. And I'm sure all of the county election directors can talk to you about, you know, the great in great detail what process they go through. But basically, the voter, the voter's information on the application is compared to the PennDOT database or the social security database to make sure that the voter is eligible before they even receive a ballot. So I want to start with that. And then on the back end, after the county receives the ballot, so they don't even get a ballot until they're determined to be eligible. And then on the back end, if they submit a ballot, then their eligibility is checked again, as was described by several of the county election directors. They check the voter's declaration and make sure that there was an application and so forth, that it all matches up. Plus, there's an opportunity for parties, candidates, watchers to challenge the eligibility of a voter. So it's a very thorough process, two parts to it. Second, as one of the, I think it was Ed Allison who mentioned, the counties in Pennsylvania go through their list maintenance process uh, on an annual basis, at least an annual basis, and they tend to do it in Pennsylvania the summer between the primary and the general. And as you know, uh, Senator, you know, one of the reasons I felt very strongly that we should not push the primary beyond June 2nd was to make sure that the counties could carry out their statutory list maintenance obligations before the general, because all of us benefit from our lists being as up to date as they possibly can be. And I should say that the, so that, and the counties can talk to you. We've sent them several lists. We worked with Eric, which I think you know is the national, the electronic registration information center to send the most complete list maintenance um, lists to the counties. They're going through the process now uh, under federal and state law, the National Voter Registration Act and the Pennsylvania version of the act. Yes. Uh, all that has to be concluded yep. by August 5th. I'm, so the counties are, I'm gonna, are I'm gonna, right in the middle of that now. I'm going to take it. Um, so, so the counties, Madam, in, Madam, Madam Secretary, um, yep. it, 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 appreciate all of, all of that. And, and I'd like to dig deeper on Eric and on Shore. You know, we're hearing from Montgomery County that they mailed 2,000 registered Republican voters, Democrat ballots. Um, I have heard from the good lady, uh, our colleague from Luzerne County, that duplicate mail-in ballots arrived after the election to voters. Um, you know, mistakes are happening. How do we know that similar mistakes wouldn't happen um, if, if we were mailing to these ballot applications to every registered voter? And how would anyone know if every registered voter actually received the ballot and not just some registered voters? So a number of things. So Montgomery County and Forrest Lehman is on this call and he can talk about Lycoming, Montgomery and at least one other county used a particular vendor, uh, mailhouse vendor that had significant problems um, and 
that included mailing some of the wrong ballots to, to people. And so the, the applications, and again, I, I think it was Farris, and I apologize, it might've been Jeff or Ed who said, let's be clear that even when the wrong applications or multiple applications in some situations were mailed, that only one ballot can be counted because of the specific uh, barcode or QR code um, and that are on the, the actual ballot return. So you can't actually count more than one ballot for an individual. Having said that, it's, I agree with you that the quality control process needs to be as intact as it possibly can be. And by the way, I, I do want to say, because I was asked about legislative changes, the Pennsylvania law, and I know Senator DeSanto, we talked to you and the other senators last week on the call about this. So for deceased voters, Pennsylvania law is very specific and restrictive about what the counties could, uh, can consult um, to take voters off of the list because they're deceased. And I think Forrest or one of the others mentioned this too. There's, it, it has to be Department of Health data or um, obituaries. It's a very limited group of things that they're allowed to look at. One of the ideas that we had for legislative change, and I think that there's a pending house bill on this as well, is to, we'd love to see language ad, that added that includes or other verifi verifiable sources or some language like that. Senator DeSanto, I think we talked to you about some specific language that would allow, for example, Eric has lists of deceased voters that account for out of state deaths. So if you have a Pennsylvania resident who dies in Florida, sometimes that information takes a little bit longer. If you could change the law to allow the counties to consult those additional sources of verifiable information, that would be tremendously helpful. And hey, Madam Secretary, if I may, um, just a follow up on the accuracy of the SURE system and then assuring that um, the counties get the information that they need from Eric and from SURE. Mr. Chairman, if I may, uh, there was a 2018 Supreme Court decision, I think it was Houston versus the Philip Randolph Institute. And, and in that decision, the Supreme Court said that they estimated 24 million voter registrations in the United States. One in eight are either valid or significantly inaccurate. So this is the highest court of the land written in a decision just two years ago. Um, so how does SURE assure us that they are accurate and they are up to date? So this is what we were just describing. So for example, when, when and Forrest, Jeff, and you guys can talk about from the county end. So this is a process that's done by the counties. We provide the lists. So for example, the national change of address list. And then um, this, we, we, this year we also gave, there were in-state moves, out-of-state moves, there were duplicates. There were all these different lists that we accumulated in partnership with Eric that were provided to the county. So each county gets their own set of lists. Then they do mailings as required by law to the voters. And again, I would defer to Ed, Jeff, and Forrest to talk about the details of what they do when they get back. But basically, they get confirmation or lack of confirmation from the voters. And then they update sure accordingly. So this is all done at the county level. The Department of State doesn't actually have the authority under Pennsylvania law to remove voters from the list. That's all has to be done by the counties, but we obviously help by providing those lists. 